Hello everybody and welcome back to more Let's Play Star Trek Online on the Romulan Faction. In the last episode we finished uh, In Shadows with Temporal Ambassador and that was a lot of fun. Now it is time to start a brand new storyline thread called Wasteland. Um, something is stirring beneath the sands of the planet of galactic peace. So if you are familiar or not with Nimbus, uh, j I will just introduce it a little bit. Nimbus was first seen in the original series Star Trek movies, Star Trek V. It dealt with, um, started with Cybok, a Vulcan, um, on Nimbus, uh, getting his way into that <laughs> planet of galactic peace colony and uh, meeting up with a Romulan, a Klingon, and a Federation ambassador to this planet of galactic peace which is pretty much run down piece of crap and um, brainwashes them and it ends up calling they have to call in the Enterprise with Kirk and Kirk flies in and saves the day and they have a whole fun rompus on the planet trying to save these people it's actually um, a, a pretty cool scene that whole that whole time on Nimbus there it is uh, is pretty neat um, so if you remember that movie um, then Nimbus here will make a lot of sense if you are not familiar with that movie and you've never watched Star Trek 5 go watch it what are you doing some people obviously um, well a lot of people you know obviously think that it's not the best Star Trek movie but just like any Star Trek movie um, you've got your winners and you've got your not so winners <laughs> but it is still entertaining and it is still Star Trek um, and I actually am of the minority that I really enjoyed Star Trek 5 it's a little corny um, the, pr the plot is stupid <laughs> I mean I'm just gonna flat out say the plot for the entire movie is just stupid um, but it's funny it has a lot of humor in it. it has a lot more humor than some of the other Star Treks actually uh, other Star Trek movies to come like Star Trek 6 totally serious you know um, but Star Trek 4 Star Trek 5 those are the humorous Star Treks with Kirk and I like that a lot I like those those are those are funny to me there's a, there's some good humor there and and it's interesting it's something uh, different <laughs> But really, the once they get to the center of the galaxy, it kind of falls flat there. But the before that, the the point getting up to there is pretty good. Anyway, I will stop rambling about Star Trek V. But if you uh, have seen the movie, um, it, this definitely helps understanding Nimbus. And if you haven't seen the movie, then this is probably foreign to you, um, and it might make more sense if you watch go watch that movie. All right, so first of all, it says here, um, weapons of mass destruction could be in the hands of your enemies. The trail leads to Nimbus 3, so we hail Nimbus 3. Um, Subcommander, after what you've been through, I wouldn't blame you if you decided to take a leave of absence, but you seem to be recovering from the vestiges of indoctrination as well as can be expected. I hope you're feeling better. The psychologists assure us that the nightmares and flashbacks will pass. At the moment, we're trying to follow up on scattered intel regarding a missing cache of Thaleron triggers. Our best information places them on Nimbus 3. Also, I will just make a segue or a side note here. If you have played the... Uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called. But the Romulan stuff, the Romulan featured episode series on any faction, it doesn't matter. If you played that, then you will understand what these Thaleron triggers are all about and who that's going to and who has taken them or creating them I should say or whatever um, it, that this is important this leads up to that storyline this is like a prequel to that storyline but they came out with that storyline first and then they have now kind of retconned um, the the story or uh, not retconned I guess just given us more depth into that story and more background into how the, how it all built up uh, with Obasek, uh, not Obasek, Hakiv, I mean, um, and his use of the Thaleron weapons and all that. So, um, 
this is kind of like an intro to that, and that's why it's coming first before we play the Romulan featured episode series, which obviously on the Romulan side I think is still there. Um, it this is kind of like a prequel to that that builds up to it. So playing it in order, it is awesome because it it, it brings depth and beginning to that storyline. Um, whereas when the featured episode series first came out, none of this existed. Wasteland did not exist. So it was just a story by itself. So playing it in order is a real pleasure now because now we have a complete story. We have like the beginning of the story and then we, get, we play the Roman and featured episode series and we have the end of that story. So it's very cool. They've just added more to that storyline. I like that. So that is cool. Now it, And now they put it in the correct order so that as you play through it, um, it, it makes more sense. Anyway, let's get to it. We're also getting increasing reports of Tal Shiar activity on the planet. Naturally, we want to keep the triggers out of the hands of Hakiv and the Tal Shiar, but I'd also like to know exactly what they're doing on the planet of galactic peace. Nimbus 3 has been a derelict planet for many years now, and it has only gotten worse under the influence of the Orion Syndicate. Hassan, the Undying, has turned the planet into his personal fiefdom. Both Starfleet and the Klingon Defense Forces have sent people to investigate, but they haven't found much. Our operatives have been following leads provided by an uh, itinerant trader, itinerant, itinerant. I don't even know what that word means. Named Horace Jones. So far, nothing's turned up. If you're feeling up to it, per uh, perhaps you'll have better luck. Go to Nimbus Three and follow up on leads regarding banned weapons. Now you'll notice you don't get a lot of skill points or expertise for this mission, and no reward. That's because this is not really a mission. This first one. This is an introduction to just get you to the planet. Um, and then the next mission is actually the mission. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the planet. Um, so let, let's just do it. We're counting on you. So now we basically go to Nimbus 3, which is up here in Tau Dewa sector block. Um, now when we get to Nimbus, what you're going to find out, I have already played this, by the way, on um, my Federation character because I wanted to get him through these new missions. And um, what I found out is Nimbus 3 is an open world, open zone. So what that means is other players are going to be on this planet when we get there. I'll, it's just like New Romulus. Think of New Romulus. Open, open zone. And they're all doing their own thing. This gets kind of confusing because there's little mini missions that you do in Nimbus, uh, little things that you do, and the problem is is that you have other people doing the same things. So what happens is, like, if you need to kill, let's say, ten Orions, well, let's say you have five different people trying to do the same thing, those Orions are going to die quickly, <laughs> and then you have to wait for them to respawn. And I think the respawn time could be sped up, especially when we get to the Gorn area. The spawn time should be turned up, in my opinion, because you're having to sit there, wait for them to respawn so you can kill enough people to get to the next part. And if you have a whole lot of people doing this all at once, um, you're not going to rack up the kills and things you need in time. And you're going to have to just wait for the respawns to, to get it all done. And hope that somebody's not, you know, messing in your territory, which is, you're, well, you're going to be walking all over the place on top of people. So, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. There's also a new gameplay mechanic that we'll talk about when we get to the planet. But as you can see, in space, um, everybody's able to fly here to Nimbus. These are all players. And uh, when we beam to Nimbus, we get to select all, we get to select the complete bridge officer cast that we want to take to the planet. But watch what happens when we beam down. So when I beam down, it's going to have a little introduction video for the first time where you walk into the city of Galactic Peace Colony, Paradise Lost. And um, when we get inside, well, where are my bridge officers? I don't have any bridge officers. Uh, here's Nimbus 3. I did select all my bridge officers. Well, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Requesting reinforcements will not bring your bridge officers down. In fact, what that does is bring a security team 
Do not click that. You don't need it yet. You'll need it for a mission, but you don't need it yet. So what, what, what happens with your bridge officers? Well, this is what is really unique about this planet, and it's the first time they've ever done this. While you're inside the city, it's just you. You don't have your bridge officers. However, watch what happens when I walk out the front door. Whoa! All of a sudden, there's my bridge officers. They just appear. <laughs> and of course, they follow me, but there they are now. They're all here. Hey, guys, where were you? You Stop running around me in circles, please. Anyway, there they are. So, they're here. You come outside of the city, bam! They all of a sudden fade in and you have your bridge officers. So what happens if you go back in the city? Well, you go back in the city, they vanish. They are no longer with you. This is a completely new gameplay mechanic that they've added to the game that I find awesome. In the past, You've had to use the request reinforcements to bring your bridge officers down or click a button that says beam in your bridge officers. Well, they've made it automatic now. When you're in this zone or in this area, no bridge officers by yourself. When you go outside, your bridge officers uh, magically appear and come with you wherever you go. That to me is just awesome gameplay element right there. And I hope they keep that kind of stuff up because that is sweet. Anyway, I am very happy about that. That is a new thing anyway that I wanted to show you. Okay, now that we are down, um, we still haven't quite finished our first I guess I guess you can call it a mission even though it's not much of one. Secrets of Nimbus. So let's finish it up. Basically we need to contact this person called Horace Jones who's right here. Greetings. Names Horace Jones, interstellar trader, daring prospector, and broker of useful information. I'm betting you're here about those missing travelers, or maybe the weapons trade, am I right? Just to get it out of the way, I'm not on anyone's side, Federation, Klingon, or Romulan. Makes no difference to me, so whatever you need, I can, prov I can provide, be it Tritanium Polish or the latest Scuttlebutt. Now, to be clear, this is all strictly, well, let's just say if this doesn't work out, then you don't know me and I don't know you and continue and you're done I've got it. so that's it we'll t talk about his voice in a second there um, that's it we are now done with the basically first mission of Nimbus as you can see it was short secrets of Nimbus is literally to get you to Nimbus and to get you to talk to Horus that's it it's done we can't even replay it it's done now we go to the next mission the lost city of paradise so as you can see we're still on the planet again this is open open uh, zone and there are little missions and mini missions you can do in fact we don't have to do the main storyline we could go to different contacts like he's a contact we can go and do what things they have available if you look on the map zoom into the colony here um, there's a bar in here. I won't go in there just yet, but there's a bar in here, and there's a bartender, and there's other contacts inside there. And if you walk around the facility, you may find some other contacts as well. And they have little mini missions you can do. And also, if you come out here, you get these um, missions where it comes up, and you have like kill as you know so many of these scorpion groups. Uh, or whatever and you do like you, you do the thing for it and um, and then you get some skill points and all that so there are things you can do out here on your own but of course we are following the main storyline mission so if we go to Horus you could <laughs> you need it. I've got it. his voice just cracks me up um, the Lost City of Paradise is the next mission. You can activate it there through him, or you can go to your hail menu. The Lost City of Paradise, we'll just do it this way because this is what we're used to. This way we know which ones we've done and the order that we're going in. You'll need to gain the trust of the townsfolk to begin unraveling the mystery of Nimbus. So let's hail. Funny seeing you folks here. No one seems to bat an eye about our little planet until the Orions get their hands on something nasty. Now between that and the Rhymelins, his joint is jumping. You want info? Sure, I'll give you info. The owner of the local bar, a reformed Borg by the name of Two of Eight, 
has his ear close to the ground. He can tell you more about the Tal Shiar. Just don't tell too many people I told you, all right? So I need to speak with two of eight in the bar on Nimbus 3 and uncover information about a missing Thaleron trigger. Now you can see this is the first real mission because look at how many skill points and expertise I'm getting. Plus I get a reward. I get a fleet personnel common quality duty officer. Very nice. So let's accept the mission. Now if we go up to Horus again. Hey there, friend. Boy, his, vo his voice is cartoonish to me. Um, we can ask him now about things. We can, uh, like, tell me about Thaleron triggers. The syndicate might be listening. <laughs> the syndicate might be listening. It's kind of a big deal. Lots of people are talking about it, but nobody really knows, right? My guess is that the syndicate wants a piece of that action, and they're doing something to keep a finger in the pie while moving things around without letting anyone see. Plus, most of the folks here just want to stay out of trouble. If someone's doing business here, it's probably at the bar, but my guess is that you're not going to find the triggers in town. It's too risky to keep them here. Okay. You need it. I've got it. What's the story with all the missing people? The syndicate might be listening. A lot of folks have come through town lately, mostly following rumors of the weapons trade, but occasionally there's some crazies looking for lost treasure or something like that. Most of them wind up heading out into the desert. Almost nobody comes back. Scorpions, Mantid, Syndicate Enforcers, take your pick of hazards. If you need it, I've got it. Have you seen or heard about a bald Romulan with a cybernetic eye? His name is Hakiv. <laughs> okay. Nobody like that. The only cyborg I know is 2 of 8 who owns the bar, and he's uh, used to be a Borg. <laughs> right. If you need it, I've got it. <laughs> can't, gosh, I can't get it. I cannot get over that voice. Okay. So let's go to the bar, which is at this bar looking thing. Drinks to the left. Accolade complete, barfly. Just walking into the bar, you get an accolade. You can access your bank or mail here. So we are now entering the bar. And as you can see, there's a lot of contacts here. And this is what I was talking about. Like talk to dance coordinator, uh, Nimbus dance competition. So you can do that. That's not part of this mission. That's just a by itself thing that you can choose to do. You don't have to. You can do it on your own time later. You can always come back to Nimbus 3 after you finish all these missions and uh, do this stuff. Um, talk to Yaman Nook. See, he's got a lot of stuff here. He's got On the Desert Front, Creatures of the Desert, Orion Contraband. He's got a lot of things, and I have not done any of that stuff. It's not part of this mission we're doing, or any of these missions. It's just extra stuff you can choose to do if you want to do it later on. So that's nice. And you got a Dabo table. What is this machine over here? You've got, ah, uh, yeah, GPL conversion. This is that... Um, advertisement that you saw in Star Trek 5 where it says beam on down um, that's pretty nice too bad it doesn't have the voice going though I would have liked to heard that have heard that talk to bartender hey, bartender have you seen any other Romulans around maybe a woman with dark hair a broad face penetrating dark eyes her name's Rena oh yeah Rena I forgot we are looking for Rena Toven Kev's sister so we need to continue doing that, and I didn't even know contacting the bartender did this, but now I know. Sorry, pal, only what you see around the bar. Um, you can go to store and uh, buy stuff from the bartender. Toven Kev, hey, let's see. Bartender. Oh. Have you seen Same thing. Well, at least we asked. Looks like he's an ex Borg too. But this is the ex Borg we need to talk to called Two of Eight. You need information? You're here for information. Someone told you I could give it to you. Make it quick. Dealer on weapons. Where can I find them? <laughs> How quick is that? I'll tell you what I told the others. The Thaler on triggers can be found outside of town. That's where the Orions do their trading. We don't have many rules here, but that's one that we all follow. Keep trouble outside the walls. Anybody looking for trouble winds winds up out here eventually, out there eventually one way or another. Other people have been looking for them? 
People have disappeared in the night. Other people go looking for them and don't come back. Know anything else? I sell drinks here, not information. What is a liberated Borg doing out here? Minding his own business, I suggest you do the same. Um, I'll tell you... Yeah, okay, we already read that. Other people have been looking for them. Maybe a Romulan, bald, one-eyed, replaced with cybernetics? Haven't seen anyone like that, right? So now that has gone away. We can't even talk to him anymore. Our options are now gone. <laughs> gone, gone, gone. So the only other thing left to do is it says locate missing officers. Where is that? Well, bring up the map and it's this great big yellow circle that you cannot miss. If you miss this big yellow circle, check your eyesight. So we need to go out into the desert and we need to locate apparently missing officers who have also gone looking for these Thaleron triggers. So let's go out into the desert and do this part. Got my bridge officers now that I'm outside and basically well we have to go into this yellow part which we're in and we need to try to find missing officers. Um, and we can kill these uh, crab things along the way. So let's do that. Now when you start doing that, you get a mission here that just came up. You'll see it starts, it says, investigate weapons, remains, and fend off nearby scorpions. Come on. Why did my weapon change? Oh, I forgot I was using that weapon. So once you start killing, then more is added to your mission. You now have to uh, fend off nearby scorpions, 5 of 20. I just killed 5 of them. I need to get up to 20. And investigate weapon remains. And the weapon remains are left in the piles of scorpions. Scan remains. And that is one of 5. I have to do 4 more of that. So, um, here's what I was talking about when other people, uh, a lot of people are playing this, which right now they're not. But what happens is if you have a lot of people doing all this same mission at once, they're all out here killing groups of scorpions. And so you have to wait for groups of scorpions to respawn. It just takes time. Luckily, we don't have that problem right right today. Everything's working fine. Everything's, there's no wait. Not a lot of people on right now, apparently on this fine Saturday. They're probably all outside enjoying the fresh air and here I am inside playing Star Trek Online. That tells you a little bit about my life, doesn't it? So let's just take every bit of loot that we can and scan this weapons cache. Yay, okay, now, just keep destroying groups of scorpions. Yay. And, take, scan you. Looks like one more group will do and then we'll have that part done. Yay, I completed the scanning of that. Oh, I gotta have I'm gonna have to find another pile, apparently. There's four, this should do for five here. Nice. Okay, we're picking up survivors nearby from Starfleet. The barkeep must have known they wouldn't make it out there. We need to recover groups of downed officers, zero of two. So where is that? Well, it's this next circle. We just have to walk deeper into the desert. I hear a bird or something in the sky. So look for officers. See these officers here? We need to rescue them. I 
again, if you've got a lot of people playing this, it gets kind of confusing. Okay, there we go. Let's save this group. Beam to sick bay. A giant scorpion has been sighted. Now, if we get this giant scorpion, we get an accolade for it. I want this giant scorpion, so I'm deviating from the main mission to take out this giant scorpion. Because we will get an accolade for it. And that is one freaking giant scorpion. Yay, mission reward. Dilithium ore accolade complete scorpion slayer. So we get dilithium and we get an accolade. Uh, for defeating the giant scorpion. How cool is that? So anytime you see a message like that, that a giant so-and-so creature has materialized, go fight it because you will get a special reward for it. Uh, well, dilithium and an accolade. There is, there's that for the scorpion, there's that for the sandworm, um, so, and then maybe one of the other creatures, so look out for that. Anytime that's spotted, um, that's definitely a side thing you can do. That is kind of cool. I don't know why I killed that group. They're, oh, there they are. I was like, well, where are the people that I need to save? Okay. Beam them to sick bay. Okay, there we go. It seems clear that two of eight sent us out here hoping we'd be wounded or killed. We have to confront him about the weapons. So now all the way back into the bar. And confront two of eight. And your bridge officers may start attacking scorpions. I just don't even worry about them. Once you enter the bar, they'll disappear anyway. Let them fight. Okay, now back into the bar. Confront two of eight. I apologize for the deception, Subcommander. Obviously, it was an error to mislead you. Do not mistake my actions to be hateful. I bear no ill will toward you. Besides, the Taciturn X Borg bit always, always works. Almost always works. I cannot be seen to be aiding you. The Orion Syndicate would kill me if they knew. However, if you have the resources to, to survive in the desert, then you might have a chance against the Syndicate. Alright, where are the Thaleron triggers then? I can only confirm that the Thaleron triggers are in the possession of the Orion Syndicate. I cannot say more than that. Call it a leftover default of cowardice, or perhaps a strong sense of self-preservation. There is only one man in this town who would be willing to help you, and that is a man who calls himself Law. He does not come out of his home nearby, but I will tell you a way to signal him. If he wants to talk to you, he will. Go to Law's house in Paradise City. Alright, I will speak with this Law. I now need to track down information on the triggers. I need to go to Law's house. So where is law? All you have to do is look here. It's a really tiny circle up here somewhere. Here it is, that, where you need to go to. So we will try to find it. It's a, a console you have to contact somewhere back over in this corner. Here we go. And I got an accolade for doing something? No, I just got a little sound telling me I'm in the right place. Okay. Uh, contact law. Go bother someone else. Who is it? Oh, you're not from around here, are you? Who told you about the signal? Are you just here to annoy me? If you know the signal, then you then you will know I used to be a peacekeeper around here. Well, I'm not singing back up for it. Not after what the syndicate did to me. Leave me alone. Um, what, what were the peacekeepers? 
Peacekeepers, ha, huh, that was a novel idea. We were supposed to be the law around here. Most people took it as a joke, but I took it seriously. The Orion Syndicate didn't like that. They dragged me away in front of everyone in the town, and well, I won't go into what Hassan and his crew did to me. All you need to know is that I learned why you don't cross the Syndicate. Mm. Well, I'm trying to find information about Thaleron Triggers. I was told you could help. Thaleron Triggers? Why should I help you with that? The Orion Syndicate will kill me if I tell you anything. You should have tried coming here about two years ago. The old me would have helped you in a hurry. Still, you look like you've survived the desert, so you must be strong. Can you guarantee that I'll be safe? Well, I'll do everything I can. Well, I suppose since you've got yourself a fancy starship and all, maybe you might just be able to make a stand against these people. I still have my doubts, especially with all the extra muscle the Syndicate has now. They're even getting help from the Tal Shiar. The Syndicate is using Nausicaan pirates and Gorn as their thugs. They used to meet uh, in nearby ruins to discuss details make secret deals, and basically plan how to make our lives miserable. That all stopped when sandworms decided to make that place their home. I'm sure there's still some data there. You'll be able to find information in the ruins, either in the old consoles or in the belly of a sandworm. Now get out of here before anyone sees you talking to me, alright? I need to collect data about, about Orion Syndicate deals in the ruins. All right, now I need to go to the ruins. Where are the ruins? Well, look on the map. Big yellow circle in this corner of the desert. Um, best way to get out of there, if you go out the front gates, you'll be coming out on this side, and that's the wrong side. So the best way to come out on the side closest to the ruins is to go behind the bar. There's a door that leads to the back side of this facility. I found it one day while I was just looking around at everything. <laughs> it pays sometimes to just explore every area, but if you come around this corner here, you will find a door, and you come out and you exit right to the desert with your bridge officers. And now you can see we're right in line to go toward um, the area we need to go toward. So we just run toward it now out in the desert in the middle of nowhere I'm guessing those stomper things keep the sandworms and the cra uh, the scorpions away kinda like in Half-Life 2 the stompers that kept the um, bugs away so now here's the sandworms um, basically it says I need to scan old consoles or defeat sandworms and I've it's a percentage so you just have to kill enough so here's some people playing on it now um, I generally just leave them to their own and try to get my own I don't want to you know interrupt their game so I go to um, my own group and take it out They're not hard to kill, but when they um, hit you with their poison, it really slows your movement down. So there you can see one group did did 10%. So I've got to kill a lot of them. Or I can also scan consoles. If you follow power lines, you can find some of these consoles. Or here's one right here. You can just scan that, and Tovan's freaking out over there. And that that's only 5%, so... Consoles are not much. You get more from doing the sandworms. Now, just like the scorpion, um, there is a gigantic sandworm. A mature one. If it pops out, the game will let you know. Go fight it, even if other people are fighting it. You will still get points for it. As long as you do some damage to it, as long as you fire on it, then you will be part of the rewards for that. So um, just, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's something to do. Something on the side.
Yay! Making progress. So they're fighting that worm. Oh, here's one that popped up. Accolade complete. Reciprocal rehabilitation. I got that for, um... Uh, something. Oh, I've healed 15,000 damage on captains. Interesting. Okay, there we go. Another group popped up behind me. Alright, we're at 72%. Oh, let's get this group. Ah, there it is, the Ahela Queen. She came out. This is what I was talking about. An Ahela Queen has appeared in the ruins. This is what you want to watch for and do if it's uh, there. You will get um, things for it. And uh, you can fight it with other people. Just um, make sure you do some damage to it so you get the points for it. Holy crap. I may die. Wow. Come on, come on. It's one of my bridge officers. Save me, please. I want to get the points for this. Yay, Dilithium Ore. Accolade complete, Queen Slayer. That's what I'm looking for. Look at that. Everybody died. <laughs> Except Tovin. Wow. That was intense. But uh, I like getting the Dilithium. I like getting the Accolade. So, um, I definitely will look, continue to look for all of those in the areas I go to. Well, you only get the accolade once, obviously, but um, the other creatures that are in this desert is what I'm talking about. You get, they also have a uh, thing to do. All right, that gave us enough points there to um, complete this. So now we go back to the bar. Oh, we can just beam right back to the city. I forgot about that. Very nice that they put this option there. You don't have to run back to the bar. You just have to do beam back to city and you're taken to the front doors and uh, we're back in that makes travel a lot faster if you're way out in the desert you can come back to the bar in an instant or to the city alright um, use the computer at the bar to decipher information so I need to find a computer at the bar which I think is this glowing one yes and decipher information from the ruins oh yeah math stuff I hate this. I don't know why they put this stuff in the game. There's better ways to do puzzles than math. I hate math. The access code has a key that includes a mathematical flaw. If you can set the first two digits to add up to the third digit and the second and third to add up to the fourth, it should be able to trigger the algorithm. So you can figure all that out for yourself if you want, but I'm just going to show you the fast way to do this because I hate math and I don't want it in my Star Trek game. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do it the fast way, which is change the first number and just hit every option until it clicks in. Change the third number, just hit every button until it clicks in. There you go, unlock message. That's all you got to do. Simple, easy, don't even think about it. Just click buttons. <laughs> all right, the blind man sees all. Talk to Horace to find out more about the mysterious message. And that is the message, the blind man sees all. Okay, we need to return to Horace Jones. So we'll come back out, and uh, actually you could hail him here. That's one way to do it, but we'll just go straight to him because he's right here. So, easy enough. Ha! 
Hi. Well, you're alive. Look, how was I supposed to know you were different from the others? I swear, I'll tell you everything you need to know. After all, you might just ha have the power to stick it to those guys in the Ori Orion Syndicate. And the thing about the blind man? Ah, oh, well, yeah, I might have some way of helping you find out more about that. Just don't leave now, alright? People have started to notice me helping you. I don't want to think of what will happen if you leave. By the way, there was someone here looking for you. Said they were sent here on a previous mission. But now they're looking to join up with your crew. Ah, get a fleet personnel common quality officer. So this ends our mission, the Lost City of Paradise. The first <laughs> one, mission. It, I've got it. Or the second one. So basically that ends the mission. We now have our reward and that mission is over. So if we go to Hale, um, it'll make more sense. But you can see the Lost City of Paradise complete. And then the next mission is Blind Men, Blind Men Tell All Tells. So we did Secrets of Nimbus and the Lost City of Paradise together. And, um, and that's basically the first mission of this thing. This stuff that's going on here, this is stuff that's optional. You can go out there and help them and do it or whatever. Team up with people if you want. Um, it's not part of the main mission that we're doing. It's just the extra stuff on Nimbus that you can do that is optional. That's what that is. All right, our, re our reward. Ooh, I, I'll tell you what. I want this banana split. I am going to consume it. Actually, now you have to equip it and all that stuff. Forget it. All right, let's just uh, add our common quality duty officer, use. And we get Nuttle. <laughs> Nuttle. Warp Core Engineer. Space. Chance of temporarily improving your ship power on use of an emergency power ability. So... He is basically a, a fleet level common quality duty officer. He's got efficient and resilient. Nuttle. Our new Doff. And I need to sell all this junk so I have room in my inventory for the next mission. But I will do that off camera and then we will start the next mission. So I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to um, Nimbus and doing the first uh, mission. We did Secrets of Nimbus and the Lost City of Paradise. Very cool introduction to Nimbus, and uh, we will continue. We've got, th uh, well, we've got one, two, three, four whole missions in this storyline to do, and um, it's going to lead to a very interesting place, you will see. So we will figure out more about what uh, this blind men message means in the next episode. So thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.